Good morning, friends. How are we doing today? Mm. I feel that. Well, this morning we are trying a new tea. It's called Black and Rose from the uh, Kitchen Witch Gourmet. So always, oh my goodness, making a mess. <laughs> always love finding new places to try tea when I can. All right. So whether you are, all right, that one's for you. Whether you are just now getting up or ending your day or maybe halfway through your day when you see this, please remember to at some point get up and stretch a little bit, drink some water, take your meds that applies to you, eat something if you can. And I hope that you remember that you are loved, you matter. I'm so glad you're here with me. And I hope that you have an awesome day. Let's give this tea a try. Oh my goodness, smells amazing. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I almost like this better than my English breakfast, which is my go-to. This is black tea, red roses, a bit of cracked black pepper, and absolute, absolute essence of red rose. All right, I'm going to get to work, working from home today. Love you guys. Cheers. So before we start working, let's uh, go over our um, inner critic affirmations, if you will. This one is about drasticizing or catastrophizing, something that I do a lot. I feel afraid, but I'm not in danger. I'm not in trouble with my parents anymore. I refuse to scare myself with thoughts and pictures of my life deteriorating. I am safe and at peace. So I think for me, what I would be saying to myself is, even though it doesn't feel like it, things are moving in the right direction. Even though it doesn't feel like it, things are moving in the right direction. Might be stressed out about something, but the fact that I am doing all the right things and progress might not be quick, but it is still progress. And I need to celebrate that more. Let me know what you guys think. Hey, good morning. Happy Saturday to you. So, Paula and I are going to lunch. We're going to, what's it called again? Culture Cafe. Culture Cafe. So, our anniversary was like, gosh, two weeks ago. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> life was crazy, so we weren't able to go out. So, we were finally going out for our anniversary. So, yay us. So lunch is over. Lunch was pretty good. Delicious. Uh, delicious. Absolutely delicious. Yes. So we were doing the math and realized we first met 23 years ago. Uh, yeah, 20, 2001. Yeah. At Starbucks back when it was cool. <laughs> no offense to anyone who works at Starbucks now, but it's just not what it used to be. They used to be real baristas. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Off we go. All right, friends. So, art update time. I feel like this would be better with a little cauldron of hot cocoa, don't you? Much better. Where was I? Oh yeah, art project update. So after the paint dried, it was time to work on the fabric. And so I laid out a tarp in the kitchen, laid the canvas out, got my supplies, and first I did a test run of the fabric dry to see how it was going to fit. 
Then I put it in a bucket, mixed Mod Podge in water, so it was all slimy and covered in gooey. That was fun, made my inner toddler happy. And then I started actually pulling the material through the canvas. I added an extra slit. I felt like it needed a little bit more texture coming through. Anyway, so I just kind of fiddled with it and messed with it until I got it the way I wanted it to be, and I let that dry. And while it was drying, I thought, hey, Let's have some tea and watch a movie. I decided to watch the Lego Batman movie. I absolutely love that movie. The opening sequence, oh, pure cinema movie magic. I love it so much. It makes me happy. Anyway, so then once it was dry, I went back down to the kitchen. I started cutting off the excess material so that I could tuck everything inside the back of the canvas. And then once all that was done, I got some Mod Podge and kind of glued down the bits that were flying away and let it dry. That's where we're at so far. Anyway, it's been kind of fun sharing the process. It's extra thought to bring my phone around and film all the clips, but I hope it's been interesting watching my process. I don't know. Don't ask my methods. I make all of this up as I go. So the art piece is done. I am excited that it's done. I am kind of telling myself it's done because I could probably pick at it forever. And the piece is going to be titled Everything's Okay. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the title. I still need to settle, settle on that. But it's a reflection of how in the name of keeping the peace, whether it's for work or relationships or sometimes even just to feel like we can get through the day, we will pretend like everything's fine. We'll kind of put a gilding on our faces, we'll mask, we'll act like everything's all right. When in reality, we might be dealing with a chronic illness, we might be dealing with a mental illness, we might be dealing with trauma, or there could be something wrong in our community or in our world, and yet for whatever reason, we are trying to act like everything is fine. When in reality, it's not. And when you peel back the layers, when you peel back that facade, when you peel back the mask we're wearing, there is hurt and pain and injustice and turmoil, turmoil and so much going on beneath the surface. And so that's kind of the idea behind this piece that I created. I took some pictures of it and I need to write all of this down and actually submit it for the judges to approve of whether or not it's gonna go into the show. The theme of the show is peacemaking. So I think it's on theme. Um, yeah, I'm just super nervous. I've never done anything like this before. It's just a small art show, but for me, it's a huge step. So, uh, Thank you all for your encouragement along the way. I appreciate you guys. Um, Y'all have kept me going. I love you so much for that. People have asked when they see the butterfly and the skulls, and they've seen the skulls that I've had around, they've asked why. Why skulls? Why the butterfly? What's the significance? So it started with the skulls. My first year teaching, we were on a field trip, and there was this exhibit where this artist had painted a bunch of skulls. And the idea was, you know, we all have one. And I thought that was really cool. You know, and dealing with people that are different from me or that annoy me, to remember that that's something we have in common. And when I die, you know, what I look like, my skin color goes away, my brain will be gone, so you won't know my neurotype. You won't know that I have a chronic illness. So you're just going to see a skull, a pile of bones. And I thought that was really significant. But yeah, they're just known as Bob and Fred. Fred ended up stuck upside down. And so at one point, I briefly considered a clothing brand called Bob X Fred with one skull right side up, one upside down. That didn't last very long. Um, and then when I got my lupus diagnosis, I found out the symbol for lupus was the butterfly. And I thought, well, hey, what if I made a butterfly logo with the skulls, with Bob and Fred? One writes it up, one upside down. And so that's where you get the graphic that I created. It's kind of my logo, sort of, if you will. And that's where the butterfly and the skulls come from. That's the significance of it. Anyway, so hope that answers that question for those who are wondering. Mm -hmm.